Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Big Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, scrapped, and unseen content in gaming. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Mario Party DS, which <clears throat> had a sort of resurgence in popularity lately. I don't know, something about Luigi being a criminal or something? Before we jump on in, if you do end up enjoying this video, consider subscribing. Not only does it help boost this video in YouTube's algorithm, but it also helps the channel grow every day. Thanks. Anyways, with all of that said, we got a bit of a shorter video today, but go grab your DS's. It's time to find some lost bits. Now, while we all know piracy is certainly no party, I guess I pretty much have to say this, but if there ever was any doubt, unfortunately there's no traces of this or any anti-piracy screen in the game or any of the other shenanigans that we've seen from alleged pirated copies. Anyways, first up, let's get it out of the way. There is a single object that, although isn't unused, has a completely unseen component to it. This is the crank-powered music speaker thing from the Call of the Goomba minigame. Since this speaker is always facing away from the player's view, there is a front side to it that is never normally seen. So yeah, to all three of you that always wondered what the front side looks like, well, here you go. Next up, Mario Party DS has three unused audio tracks. Now they may not be as slappin' as the Piracy Is No Party track, but still two out of the three aren't all that bad either. Each of these unused tracks is duplicated numerous times and is listed under various different names in the game's files. That said, each track can be identified by a unique set of instruments, so these are where these specific names are derived. First up is Dummy, and this is a quick little four-note jingle. Based on how it sounds, I think this could have been used as a test or placeholder for anything from confirming something in a menu to starting a minigame. Next up, we got Dummy 2, and this is a track featuring about 8 bars of a pretty groovin' drum beat. Let's have a quick listen. Duplicates of this track are found amongst songs used for the boards in the game, as well as with the tracks used after a minigame was completed. So just based on that, it's likely that Dummy 2 was used to test audio in both of those scenarios. Some have also noted a slight similarity to the drum beat used in the intro to the track heard in the underground segments in the All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros. So some have also speculated that this drum beat could have served as a beat for a similar underworld track here, like maybe an early version of the track that's heard in the Boogie Beam minigame. Either way, last up, but absolutely not least for the normally unheard audio tracks is once again following the dummy naming scheme, MM Dummy. And this one, let me tell ya, is an absolute hands down certified bop. Now that is music I can jam to. MM Dummy is found before the music that's used for the minigame results screen, so it's possible that this may have been some sort of early version or test of the music that's meant for the results screen or maybe the end of one of the minigames. Whatever the case may be, I think it's really too bad that it didn't get incorporated in any way. Admittedly, Mario Party DS is pretty light in terms of the typical unused content types we cover on Lost Bits, as yeah, that's basically it on that front. But thankfully to save the day, at least a little bit, this game has a slick little debug mode for us to check out. Now unlike the debug menu we saw back in the Mario Kart DS prototypes, this one actually has a user interface so we can actually see what we're doing here. It's not pretty, but at least it's something. Right away on the root menu, we can see the many different options we have here to choose from, in addition to some info about the current version of the game that's being played, including the build date, which for this version is November 28th, 2007, at exactly 11.17am. Now unfortunately, this debug menu isn't as crazy as some of the others we've seen here on Lost Bits, so don't get your hopes up too much. Anyways, first up on this menu is Start, and unsurprisingly, this selection just boots up the game as normal. Go figure. Next up is Multi-Boot Parent, and this is essentially a test for the game's multiplayer mode, specifically as being the host for the game's DS download play. Surprisingly, apparently this actually works. Now I wasn't running this on real hardware, so I couldn't test it with another DS, but yeah, apparently others can actually connect using this feature. 
On that note, next up is Multiboot Client, which as you'd expect is another multiplayer test, this time as a client connecting to the host. What's odd about this though is that Mario Party DS normally doesn't offer multi-card connections for multiplayer, just single card download play. And just like the parent boot, this mode also apparently works completely fine. In fact, since this is essentially multi-card multiplayer, it actually works a lot better than single card play, as load times are significantly cut down as to not having to send over as much data between DS's. So why didn't they just include multi-card multiplayer in the final game, you might be wondering? Well, it may have had something to do with a little bit of a side effect that can apparently be seen with the testing version of it here. Basically what happens is that all of the data gets sent from the host to the other players, and basically overwrites any save they had prior. So if the host ended up being a newer save file, and the other DS's had more stuff unlocked, they would get a uh, not so epic surprise. It's not exactly clear why multi-card multiplayer was scrapped in the game, because it seems like it would have been a logical option to keep to cut down on load times, but it's believed that this side effect was something the developers couldn't or didn't want to fix in time for release. Anyways, moving on, before we get to the next selections, let's quickly go through the many options here that aren't functional. These all simply just crash the game when trying to access them, as I guess whatever they contained was removed from this build. These include Atakira, Hakamada, Miyawaki, Takasima, GUI Menu, and Message. The first few were very likely named after a respective developer of the game, and likely contained whatever it was that they were tasked with developing. GUI Menu sounds like it was a place to test menus and other user interfaces, go figure. And lastly, Message was probably just a message text testing area, much like what we saw in previous Mario Party games. Oh yeah, there's also Viewer, which too crashes the game, but I think this one sounds really promising. I'd like to assume it was some sort of model viewer like we've seen in past Mario Party games, or even Pikmin. I think it would have been awesome to see something like that in this game as well, so it's really too bad that it's not accessible here either. But anyways, let's get back to the ones that are. Next up is Board Entrance, which just takes you back to the Party Mode menu, nothing crazy. Then next is Extra Draw and Catch, and this just starts up a game of the Pen Pals multiplayer mode. If this is accessed from the debug menu, the player will actually control both the player 1 and player 2 slots at the same time. However, the camera will only focus on player 1. Similarly, the next option on the debug screen is Extra Color Territory, which just boots up a game of Desert Duel. Here again, the player controls player 1 and 2 at the same time. Now both of these appear to just have been an easier means of testing the modes that are normally multiplayer exclusive. Next up is the only one of the developer name options here that actually works, and this is H Nishi. This is essentially just a quick shortcut to start up one of the board games. There's also the tutorial option, which of course just takes you to the tutorial stage, but unfortunately you don't get to play on it as normal or anything, it still just plays out the tutorial. And lastly, there's also Board Map Debug, where once again we got another disappointment, as this one just does not work. And last up, and probably the best part of this menu, is Minigame. And yep, you guessed it. Much like we've seen in past Mario Party Lost Pits videos, this option lets us quickly load into basically any minigame. All of the minigames here are also transliterated from Japanese, so sometimes it's tough to tell which minigame is which, like who knows what Piswo Kaita is. But it's still pretty cool nonetheless. A result coin display can also be toggled on this screen, and this basically just displays certain numbers for each player, depending on the type and result of the last minigame played. For example, when playing a battle minigame, it will rank the players from first to last, or in most cases, it will just show how many coins would have been awarded to each player after the minigame. This menu also has another sub-menu where the user can basically change around the settings. These include choosing which characters are used, their difficulty, as well as teams for 2v2 and 1v3 minigames. But my favorite part is that with this, more than one player can use a certain character. So now finally we can have the Waluigi Battle Royale we always dreamed of. Now this is art. Kind of a nifty mode to quickly load into some minigames, but unfortunately this menu doesn't contain any unused minigames or test maps or anything of that sort that we've seen in the past. Overall, definitely not one of the more robust debug menus we've seen here over the years, but still, always nice to see a debug menu, no matter how extensive it may or may not be. I know Mario Party DS is nostalgic for a lot of people, and many of you have been requesting this video for a while now. So even though there isn't anything all too groundbreaking, I still hope you enjoyed this video. 
But as always, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in a bit.